This is a Tesla coil and it plays music with plasma. And I bet that you wonder, if this is a Tesla coil, where is the coil? You would expect something like this, right? A copper coil with a huge amount of loops. Well, this Tesla coil has its windings in 2D, meaning that the windings are flat on the PCB. That's right! Using the services of PCBWay, I was able to manufacture these very thin coils covered in gold for more conductivity with over 180 loops, so it creates high voltage. In this video I want to show you the schematic and what you need, we assemble the controller PCB and then we connect it to the coil PCB and test out its power. It will get shocking, pun intended. I will also show you how it works and how to add the Bluetooth music to it. Please be careful working with high voltage and never touch the device while connected to power and if you're not sure of anything, don't try this project out. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start by checking the PCBs, then the schematic, the parts that we need and finally we assemble it so you will understand how it works. For this project I've made two PCBs, one for the power controller and resonator and the other one is just the coil. We need to keep them separate because the coil will create thousands of volts and the arcs could jump to the other PCB and burn the components. For the coil PCB, in order to have better conductivity, I've asked PCBWay to make the tracks covered in gold. And as you can see, they look awesome. The windings are only on the top side of the PCB, but on the other side we have just one loop. And this one is thicker, because this will be the primary. The controller PCB has all the components, the power regulators, some timers, the Bluetooth music receiver, some power MOSFETs, coils and capacitors for resonance, and so on. So download the Gerber files from below and go to PCBWay.com. You click the code now button and add the size of the PCB and the amount. In my case I ordered the black solder mask, because it looks great. You save it to cart and on the next page upload a zip file with the Gerbers. And after the confirmation you place the order and receive the boards in just a few days. Ok, so now we have the PCBs and they look awesome. Especially the top one with the golden coils. And these tracks are only 0.14mm thick and 0.50mm clearance. If you check the PCBWay capabilities page, you can see that they are more than capable of making very fine tracks without any problems. There are more than 180 loops on this PCB, and here you can see the tracks on the microscope. But now let's check the schematics. I now work in Altium, one of the most trusted PCB design system. And by the way, you should check the free trial link for Altium PCB Designer below and check it out, create some schematics, PCB layouts and all the tools that you need in one place. It's an awesome tool, very professional, and together with Altium 365 and Octopart, you have everything that you need. So we create a new project. Add a new schematic and then we add a new PCB. Now for the coil schematic all we need are 3 pads. So go to design, update the PCB file and place the pads. Using the arc tool I draw the perimeter of the primary, and this will be on the bottom layer and I set it to a thickness of 1.2mm, because it will withstand more current. And then for the middle pin I use a 0.14mm track and add all the loops. And in the middle I add a via of 5mm. I also add 4 more vias on the corners for later support and the coil PCB is done. For the power controller this should be the schematic. We have timers, comparators, power regulators and so on. So in Altium I first import all the needed components. 
I know that I need a 555 timer, the LM393 op amp, the AMS1117 5V regulator, and so on. So now that I have all the components, I use the wire connection and complete the schematic. Then once again you pass from schematic to PCB. So I arrange the components more or less where I want. And finally I add the tracks. I use 4mm tracks for the power resonator, because this will handle a lot of current. Then I make the rest of the connections and the PCB is ready. I check the rules and I also export the files for PCB manufacture. And if you also want to try Altium Designer, you have a link below in the description. So now we know the schematic and we have the PCBs. This is how it works. The 555 timer creates the pulses and we apply those pulses to the second timer and this will apply the pulses to the oscillator. The oscillator is made out of these two coils and these two capacitors. And to control the firing pulse's power, we have these two MOSFETs. And this will resonate. On the other side, using the switch, we can change from the 555 timer to the Bluetooth music receiver. And this will apply its signal to an operational amplifier. And again, we apply that to the second timer, creating the resonance, but this time with the music at the same time. I gather all the needed components, and you have a full part list below the video. The main input will be of 48 volts from this DC adapter. So I get this back converter to lower the voltage to 12 volts for the ICs. Then I also add the AMS1117 for 5 volts for the Bluetooth receiver. I get the passive components such as resistors, coils, and capacitors. And finally, we need two timers and the LM393 op amp. I soldered all the components and it was a mess, because making tests I had to desolder a lot of capacitors and try different values to get the resonance. Actually I soldered this board two times, because the first time I've burned the converter, and the 40 volts got to the rest of the circuit and burned everything. So sorry for such a messy board, I didn't have time to solder it once again from scratch. And the power MOSFETs are placed on the bottom side for a reason because like that we can bend them and we can add a heat dissipator. Because if you use this for some time, they might get really hot, so you must add a heat sink for longer use. That's why all three MOSFETs are facing up, with the metal pad facing down. So use some thermal pads and add some sort of heat dissipator. Ok, this potentiometer is connected to the 555 timer. It controls the frequency of the pulses. And this one is connected to the other timer and controls the power. I use some solid wires and connect the power board to the coil. They have the same markings, so it's very easy to know where each wire will go. In the middle of the coil PCB I have a 5mm via. And here I could solder this kind of insert with an empty thread for screws. But first I try it with a simple solid wire. I power the board with 48 volts from a DC adapter. I increase the power and there you go, we have a working Tesla coil. Some amazing sparks are coming out of the wire. I can also change the frequency with the other potentiometer. And it looks quite cool, right? And it's also very powerful. Let me dim the light so we can better see the sparks. But now we add music, right? But first, because it looks a bit ugly like this, I've created a case for it and 3D printed in PLA. The controller board goes below and the coil will go above. I add these insertion nuts with my soldering iron and then I can close the coil PCB with some screws. So now it looks a lot better, right? Also, instead of that simple wire, I now add a screw on that thread. And I test it once again. And wow, with the screw it looks like the power is even higher. We have some arcs of around 10 centimeters or so. And that's amazing. 
Okay, so now you get your smartphone and change the switch for music. Connect to the Bluetooth module and play some music. And there you go, we have the sparks and the music is coming out of the oscillations. So even if the quality is not as real music, this is pretty cool, right? So you have everything that you need below on my website for the schematic, the Gerber's files for the PCB and the part list if you want to make your own Tesla coil or even improve this one for more power. In my case I want to use some better inductors, thicker tracks for the coil and more loops and increase the power even more. And to learn how a Tesla coil works, you can check my previous video on such a device and see how it creates a high frequency and high voltage spark. Links are below for those previous videos, even if that coil is not that powerful as this one. I hope that you like this project and that you have learned something new. If so, give me a like and comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was another project and I hope that you like it. As you all know, to buy all these modules, a huge help from you is from Patreon. So if you want to support me, you can support me there, but also just commenting below, giving me a like or sharing this video, it will also support my channel. So thank you very much to all my patrons and to you guys.